Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Rob, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create this LED effect. It all starts with this grid. We'll use some inputs to control how much resolution we have, and then we'll use some math nodes. These will ensure that the grid stays perfectly square. Then we break it apart, split it out into a bunch of little components, and then slide the components over. Then we'll color it before joining it back together and then fixing the few errors. And all this stuff down here allows us to do things like change the height. So we can do things like that and we can offset the texture however we want. And by the way, this project is available on Patreon if you wanna get a copy of it. All right, so let's get started. Create a new project, switch over to the Geometry Node tab, select New, and then add in a grid, place it right in between there. Let's create two integers that we can use to drive the resolution of the grid. Rename them to X Resolution and Y resolution. These are just gonna be temporary. So we have something to play with and we'll, we'll make it better later. I'm gonna set it to five and three for now. This will just keep it simple so we can see what we're doing a bit easier. All right, now, if you notice, we have the number five here, but we have one, two, three, four faces. It would be nice if the number here matches the, the number of faces. So to do that, add in a math node, set it to one, and then just duplicate it like that. So now the number of faces matches the number we have on the resolution. So far, so good. Now the resolution matches the faces, but they're not square. To get them square, we need to add another math node, set it to divide, and we're gonna divide the X resolution by the Y resolution, and then we're gonna use this as the size for the X. This will ensure that it's square. We can measure these if you want, just to prove it to you. So that's gonna be a third, and that ends up being a third. So these are all square. And this is gonna stay true no matter what we use. They're always gonna be square. Let me switch these back to five and three just to keep things simple. All right, now let's create the subpixels. So what I wanna do is split each one of these up so they're individual faces and then we can scale them down. So to do that, I'm gonna add in a split edges right after the grid and then add in a scale elements. All right, switch it to single axis and then set the scale to be one divided by three. And just in case if these aren't set properly, they need to be set to one, zero, and zero. All right, so we had, we did have a cell right here, but then it got squished down along the X axis. So that's good. Now we need to duplicate these two more times and then join them back up. So let's add in a join geometry and a transform geometry, but don't connect it to the main geometry because we need to split it off like that. Now, when we slide this over, we get another copy and you'll see at some point, there's some point where it's gonna be flush with the next one. So if we think about this, let's uh, let's mute some of this stuff. So if we think about this, right, this, the length of this right here is being calculated. It's this size X, right? And this size X is being calculated by the X resolution divided by the Y resolution. And we need, we just need one of them, which is, which is gonna be this divided by X, which is the number, which is the resolution. But, but this simplifies, because these uh, X's will cancel, and this will simplify to one over Y. But we don't need just one of these, we only need a third of it. So we need to put a three in front of there. So it's gonna be one over three Y. 
All right, let's bring these back in. There's a trick. You might think you need two math nodes in order to do this, but there's actually a trick to do it in one. So let's duplicate a math node, set it to divide. And then in the, in the first input, set it to one over three. And then we're gonna use the Y as the second in the second socket and now add in a combine XYZ and then use this value for the X and then connect this to the translate. And you'll notice that it gets snapped perfectly flush with the other one. Now we just need to repeat this for the next sub pixel. So duplicate it, but don't connect it. Split it off like this and then rejoin it and then use the same value in the next translation. So now we have our sub pixels. All right, the next thing I wanna do is set up the shading so we can see what we're working with. All right, so to set up the shading, create a image node, then select the file you want, then add in an image offset group. This group is a thing we made in a previous video. I'm gonna link it up in the top right, but basically what it does, it'll calculate where the image needs to be placed so it's center to the world. If you don't feel like watching the video, this is what it looks like. Just make sure you have all the connections set up properly. Make sure all the drop down menus are right and then make sure it's wired and make sure to copy these values. Now we're gonna have to use this later on and it's kind of tricky to have it in here. So I'm actually gonna take this copy it and then bring it outside and then delete that. All right, now we need a image texture. Connect this, connect the image to the image texture and then this vector is gonna go into the vector there and then connect the color to the group output. All right, now over on the modifier stack, set this color, name it something. It can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it color. And then on the material properties, delete the default material and add in three more slots and three more materials and then rename them to red, green, and blue. And then make sure the red one's selected and then switch over to the shading tab. We need to add in a attribute node, change this to color, then add in a separate color node, connect the color to color, add in a color ramp, connect the red to the factor, and then change this white to be 100% red, and then connect color to the base color. We're gonna make three copies, or well, two more copies of this. So to make things easier, just select these three nodes we just created, copy it, and then switch over to the green, paste it, reconnect it, and then just make sure that you have the green go into the factor and change the red to green and then just repeat that for the blue. Once that's done, head back over to the geometry node tab. In between here is where we're gonna actually set the material. So go in and create a set material, place it on the first one, set it to red, and we can switch over to shading so we can see. So we're starting to see something already. Duplicate it, set this one to green, duplicate it, Set this one to blue. And we didn't connect that. There we go. So we're starting to get somewhat of an image. If we go to our resolution and set it to something like 240 by 135, we can start to see the image. Now you may notice that the pixels like are a little bit, uh, they're not solid. So to get them solid, Go over to the side panel and down here where it says color, make sure this attribute domain is set to face and that'll make your pixels nice and crisp. You may notice that there's a small error 
This very last subpixel is black, right, when it should be lit up. And the reason for that, if we switch our resolution back to five by three, and then look at it from the top, you may notice that this side right here is a lot longer than this side right here, right? And that has to do with how, how we made this. So originally, we had a, a square right here, and then we squished it down and then slid it over twice, which means everything is shifted to the right a little bit. So we have to undo that. So to undo it, create a transform geometry and place it just after the join geometry. And we're just gonna slide this back. Now the distance is gonna be the inverse of whatever's coming out of this combine X, Y, Z. So an easy way to fix it is just to take both of these nodes, copy them, set it to multiply. And then for the second one, I'm just gonna set it to negative one and then take this output connect it here. So all that does is reverse it. So now it lines up right in the center and we don't have that dead pixel anymore. All right, so we're getting the effect, but I would like to take it to the next level. In the intro, the height of the pixels were distorted. To get that effect, what you need to do, let's make some space between, uh, let's make some space right in here and then add in a set position node right after the split edges and then add in a noise texture. Set the scale to something like 1.12, something kind of small and then add in a combine XYZ connect the color to the Z and then the vector to the offset. So that'll distort the image. It looks mostly right, but if you look really closely, you'll see that it's moving each sub pixel individually, which doesn't look right. Every pixel should be flat. So like every three pixels should be flat. So to fix that, all you need to do is add in a evaluate on domain set it to vector, set it to face, then connect it like that. And now each pixel will be flat. Now it's looking good, but we don't have much control and I'd like to fix a few issues. The first is that it's not centered on the Z axis. So if we increase the scale by adding in a math node and place it just after the noise texture, set it to multiply. Now if we increase the value, it'll yeet off to who knows where. Right? It would be nice if we could play around with this value without it yeeting. So to fix that, add in a matte range, place it just after the texture node, and then set the two min to negative one. This makes the midpoint of the texture to be lined up with the midpoint of the x-axis. So now when we increase the value, it hovers around the center and it doesn't yeet. Also think it would be nice if we could control where the noise texture is located on the image. So to do that, add in a vector math node, connect the vector to vector, and then add in a uh, position node and connect this to one of them. It doesn't matter which. Now when we move this around, it moves the texture around. This can be connected to the group input. So we have some control over it. You can go ahead and do the scale on that. You can rename them if you want. So far we've been using these integer inputs to drive the resolution, but I think it would be nice if it were more customizable. Let's set it up so when we have a value of one, this represents full resolution. When we have a value of two, it'll represent half res. Three would represent quarter res, right? And so on. All right, so to do that, click the group input and then add in a new socket change its type to integer, rename it something like resolution, set its default to four, its min to one, and its max to eight. And then 
on the modifier stack, make sure it's set to four as well. If you're on a slow machine, be really careful. If you set the resolution too high, it could crash your computer. Now would be a good time to save your work if you're following along. It would also be a good time to hit the like button and subscribe if you have it already. <laughs> All right, so to get the resolution to work, don't delete these just yet. We're gonna use these as a placeholder. All right, so start off by adding in a math node. Set it to power, set the base to two, and then connect the resolution to the exponent. We're gonna use the output of the power node to divide the actual image resolution. So create a another math node, set it to divide, and then connect, connect the width to the first input and the power node to the second input. And then we can connect this to wherever the X resolution is going to. So just start from here and just follow where it's going. Now I'll duplicate the divide node and then repeat that process for the Y value. Take the height, place it there. Now, as I increase what I call the resolution, we get more resolution the closer it gets to one. And if I increase it, we start to lose resolution. But there's a slight problem because if we set the resolution to one, you'll see that the output from the power node is two when it should actually be one. So we have to adjust this. So I'm gonna set it to, I'm gonna set it back to four. I don't actually want to go to full res on this image just because it's really big. Yeah. And I want you to be careful here because if you get careless and do something like duplicate the power node and set it right in between here, it could cause problems. It's not going to cause us problems because we're doing, we're basically doing like one over that. So it would actually decrease if this increased, but it's just a bad habit to get in. So just be careful here. So I'm going to create a, another math node, set it to subtract. Take the resolution, put it in the first input, then set the other one to one, and then connect this to the exponent. So now when this is at one, it really is full resolution, then two is half resolution and so on. And by the way, this is just one way of doing it on the Patreon file. I've got it set up so you can do it two ways. So we could sit here and adjust it this way, but I also think it would be nice if we could do it in a, in like a smooth way. So I have it set up so you can use a, uh, a value of zero to one. So as we go to zero, the resolution drops to zero. And then as we increase it to one, the resolution increases to a hundred percent. So that's another way you can do it. And I've got that set up for you to to do it automatically, you just have to toggle this use zero to one switch on or off. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good one and take care.